Okay guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Omnibus F3 All-in-One Flight Controller. And this is from Banggood. This is the Banggood version. They call it the Beta Flight F3 Flight Controller. And this is a pretty cool flight controller. I've been waiting for this for a while. It's got, it's packed with a ton of features and I'm going to go through some of the highlights of what it can do. First and foremost, uh, this thing is designed for Beta Flight and it, it runs an F3 processor, you can see right here, and it has a MPU 6000 gyro, you can see there it's upside down right there, and which runs over SPI, so you can run uh, 8 kilohertz gyro sync and 8 kilohertz PID loop. Now the, one of the really nice features about this particular board is that um, it has a built-in 5 volt regulator here on the bottom so that you can uh, directly connect this to your PD, uh, PDB or directly to your LiPo and is actually designed for 4-in-1 uh, ESCs so that you can connect them directly to a 4-in-1 ESC through this connector here at the bottom and just to uh, show you an example this is the connector that comes with the uh, Racer Star 4-in-1 ESC this doesn't come with this board but it plugs into this port right here just like that. So you can have a very clean build. You have this going into your flight controller and then the other end going into your 4-in-1 ESC. That way you don't have to solder any of the uh, signal wires for your motor leads which are over here. On top of that this comes with an OSD and it is uh, right there. It's called the ET7456E chip. It's the, sort of the successor to the MAX 7456 chip that uh, was uh, on a lot of the uh, minimum OSDs previously that were also very susceptible to being burned out through uh, voltage spikes. This is a much improved version. On top of that, it is configurable in Betaflight Configurator, so you don't have to use a separate interface or GUI to configure the OSD. It's all configurable within Betaflight Configurator. Here you can see we have a micro SD card slot. There's nothing in there right now. But that's for black box logging, so you can put in a uh, pretty large card in there and, and record your black box logs for much longer flights and actually capture, capture a lot more data. So I'm going to go through some of the uh, pinouts here. Um, I'll put a, a diagram up here uh, in the corner showing what these actually are labeled because they're not really labeled here on the board itself. So I'll put a little diagram over here so you guys can follow along with me. The more important ones are going to be here at the top are going to be your video out and in for your camera and your video transmitter for the OSD. This top row here is going to be for your uh, PPM or SBUS receiver. You got your four motor outputs over here. Uh, there's five through eight as well if you need them. Uh, there's a variety of other UARTs on these pads over here that are labeled. You can see that over there. Uh, over here you got uh, on the top LED strip, I got some let's see, RSSI, going to gonna connect your LiPo there, your buzzer there. Um, so you guys can look at this diagram if you want to see all of the various connection points or connection options here. You got your Spectrum satellite here, and then over here on the top is your SPI bus. So I'll go ahead and I'll connect this up to my computer in uh, Betaflight Configurator, and I'll show you how the... Uh, configuration of the OSD is integrated into the uh, configurator and how easy it is to set up your OSD. Okay, so I have the board connected to my computer now. Go ahead and connect to it and we can see that it already comes flashed with uh, Betaflight version 3 and I'm going to go ahead and uh, upgrade this to version 3.01 and the uh, firmware for this should already be uh, built into Betaflight configurator. So we'll go ahead and disconnect. Go to the firmware flasher here, and we will select Omnibus for the board. Three point oh one. We'll do a full chip erase and set the manual baud rate to two fifty six zero zero zero. Load the firmware. And then we'll go ahead and flash it. Okay. Go 
and connect to the board. And now we're on 3.01. And looks like everything's working. Go ahead and calibrate my accelerometer here. Try and keep this level. And hit that. Okay. Okay, so here in the ports tab, we got our three UARTs, and our USB port is on uh, the virtual COM port. It's not using one of the UARTs. Everything here uh, is pretty much the same. Um, we want to enable the OSD. Let's see, where would that be? Okay, so it's already enabled right here. And if this is enabled, then we'll get this uh, box over here for the OSD so we can configure that. We'll get to that in a second. I believe all the other uh, settings for this board will be pretty much the same as a lot of uh, the other F3 boards out there. So we'll just kind of go through this real quick and just take a look at them. We're not going to do a setup here. We're just going to take a look at what this, what's different on this board. So yeah, so let's go right to the uh, OSD tab. And this is the, this is the thing that really makes this board unique and special. And the main reason I wanted to get this board is, is now we can configure our OSD, which is a minimum OSD style of uh, uh, the way it looks in terms of like that, what, what kind of features it has. Um, but you don't have to have a separate uh, configuration tool and uh, a, a different port to plug it into. It was just a, a complete nightmare to try and set up, especially to try and explain to someone who's never done that before, they will just, it would just be really hard to explain. So this really makes things a lot easier. So you can just go right in here, select which ones you want, which elements you want, RSSI, battery voltage, um, all these features. For me, the only thing that I really care about are the flight, the flight time. I don't care about flight mode or the on time or the horizontal sidebars or the artificial horizon or the crosshairs, um, not even RSSI. The only things I really care about are the main battery voltage and how long I've been flying. Now, uh, if I have a PDB that can give me current draw, I'll put that on there as well, or milliamp hour draw. Those are things that are interest, interesting to me. Of course, if you, you want to put these other things on there, uh, you can do that to configure the way you like. For me, I, I don't like a lot of clutter, so I, I, these are the only things I, I tr tend to put on my OSD. Now, what's really nice, instead of having to use a really clunky GUI that was uh, for minimal OSD before, th this is much, more, much, much cleaner. You can just go in here and move your stuff around on the screen to where you want, just drag and drop. And it's literally that easy. So I'll have my uh, flight time here in the... Uh, lower right corner. I'll put my battery voltage in the lower left corner. And yeah, and it's out of the way. I can take a quick look at that, glance at it if I need to, but it will, it's not going to be in my line of sight where I'm flying. And it's only there if I actually really want to take a look at it. Here we can change our video format. I'm going to leave it auto for now, although most of my cameras are in TSC. And I'll, I'll leave the units Imperial. Um, you can adjust your RSSI and your uh, capacity here as well. And that's pretty much it. Now, you can go into Font Manager and change the fonts. You can change the bold, large, or you can uh, put in your own custom uh, font type and upload a font. Uh, the default is just fine for me, so I'm going to leave it there. And then you can hit Save. And that's pretty much it. It's that easy to set up your OSD. And as long as you wire up your camera and your video transmitter to the flight controller correctly, uh, you'll get the OSD overlay on your on your video transmission back to your goggles. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to plug in a uh, micro SD card and into the uh, micro SD card slot to see if we can get some information about how how big of a uh, how much flight data we can actually log here because it says right now no card inserted. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, I put in a four gigabyte micro SD card and let's go ahead and connect and take a look at the black box. And now we can see we have an onboard SD card card ready. Uh, 
make sure you format the card before you uh, put that in there and uh, then this will work otherwise you'll get an error uh, you want to make sure that you select onboard SD card slot for your logging device and uh, the logging rate I usually don't go 100% I usually probably I go like 33% or 25% hit save and reboot and you should be good for uh, black box logging on your next flight Anyway guys, this is a little quick review of the Omnibus F3 all-in-one flight controller. I think it's a really good flight controller. You should you guys should check it out. I'll put a link in the description below where you can take a look at it and see what the latest pricing is. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this in the comment section, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.